Hello from the Lander TV. This is King Cool, and welcome to the Toast Reviews. For those of you who do not know how this works, I have just watched a movie, and I have some toast, and, uh, well, it's, will soon be toast. It's now some form of bread or something. And I have to talk about the movie that I just saw before my toast is done. And if it burns, then something happens. I have to eat the burnt toast, or I have to pull out the panty box, or something. It's still sort of in flux, you know, it's, a brand new, it's sort of a new show. Uh, today, we will be discussing Bender's Big Score, the first uh, Futurama movie, which I have seen before, and it's sort of like, it might be, ah, it's a cop-out. It's like, well, I've seen it, but I also did re-watch it, because I felt like, yeah, I'm going to re-watch this. At the moment, I am not making the promise that I'm going to always watch something new. Um, if you guys object to that, and you're like, hey, I'd rather you watch something every week, you know, go ahead and let me know, and then I'll try to do that more often. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do this all the time. It's like I'm going to watch The Matrix for the seventh time. Boop 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 boop. Well, this time, you know, I'll never do the same episode again. I try not to. And what are we toasting today? We have these here: cinnamon raisin bagels from Dunkin' Donuts. I had a bagel I saved from Dunkin' Donuts for about five days, and it is so stale. I think things go staler in a paper bag in the fridge. Go figure. That wasn't the smartest thing I ever did. I should have frozen it. Nevertheless, here we go. Ah, come on. Ah! Don't do that. Um, I've ever seen something recently that, uh, I think it was Movie Bob said that his favorite of the four, um, uh, future movies was Bender's Game, the third one with the D&D stuff, and I think he is out of his mind. Son of a bitch! Hang on. Ah, <sighs> freaking telemarketers. Damn it. Alright, well, I like for fun. Hasn't, I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. Anyway, uh, I think that this is probably the best of the four Futurama movies. And I'm not going to say too much about it, though. It does involve, um, I think probably critical levels of time travel. And I always like good time travel story. As long as it's not stupid bullcrap time travel, like in the first Tomb Raider movie, where time travel is only used to undo something that was supposed to be permanent, or even if it's like a Star Trek, where... Have you ever seen that movie? I think it was uh, in Voyager. It was the sixth season. It was Fury. It was where Kez came back for the one episode. It's a decent episode, but it starts out with her laying waste to this and killing one of the uh, main characters. It's like, well, we know this isn't going to stick. Unless she decided to leave the show or something. It's like, no, this ain't gonna stick. You're gonna go back in time and you're gonna fix it. And this sort of plays with that convention of, um, it's almost so very time splitters in that way. Um, I mean, you know, Futurama, Bender is selfish, Fry is dim, most of the characters are dim and, and funny, and the professor is befuddled. Well, well you know. But, uh, I want to talk about the things I didn't like about it. Which, the one is, about an hour in, they all start singing a song. And then, about ten minutes later, they start singing another one. And these are the only two songs in the whole movie. And I'm sort of like, is this supposed to be a music? If you're going to make it a musical, make it a musical. But, they do, I guess they just didn't have an in until that, that time. I don't know if there's any other, if the other movies have songs like that. But it seems like, eh, here's two songs. I think they were just sort of poking around and trying to figure out what worked. Um, and second off, the main antagonists are alien scammers. You know, they do a lot of internet jokes with this one. Um, which, this is a good thing about a Futurama, especially some of the new stuff, which I actually like. A lot of people I don't think like it as much. At least they're doing jokes that didn't really exist in, in, in ways that they did, like when there's a one of the new one where uh, Bender goes, Damn you, Obamacare! You know, I thought that was pretty funny. I'm starting to smell toasty cinnamon uh, raisin, so I better wrap this up. But they're these ugly, uh, nudist, like, they look sort of like, they have a big nose or something, like a big nose with like a flabby thing. It's, uh, uh, cartoons have things like that in it all the time, trying to think what he exactly looks like. He looks like a turtle without a shell or something. And they walk around and they're aggressive and they're dumb and it's like, oh. This, it's like, you guys are gross, but more, you're annoying, but more so, you're not really that amusing. Occasionally they say funny things, you know. They're not so out of it, but they're not really up to the league of everything else. Now, I still, I, I, I would have to say I love this movie, but I will say that I strongly like it. It's my favorite, and I gave it five stars on, on Netflix, because it is very solidly done. You'd have to watch the whole thing to really get why. I'm not going to say too much. Um, 
but it's good. You know, I uh, I enjoyed it. It's definitely, as I said, my favorite. Um, what else? It's almost hard to it, it, it's it's hard to talk about Futurama specifically because, uh, in a way, I'm sort of like, yeah, if they made a uh, what was the the movie that they made with uh, uh, the Stewie Griffith story with and Family Guy? It's like you know what this shows like now and forever. Futurama is better than Family Guy, no matter how much you like Family Guy. And I I like Family Guy okay. It it's not as good as Futurama by a mile. Uh, let's call it time. Oh, that was the phone. <sighs> Ooh, you're a little dark. No matter. I will slather you with butter. Okay, I don't think I have anything more to say, so I'm not going to, uh... Oh, hang on. Look at the back side of that. Can you see that in that light? I should really have turned a light on in here. But I've got the sun, nature's light. Um... So I'm not gonna, you can watch me butter it if you want. I'll go over here. There we go, well, wouldn't make anyone motion sick with that. But I believe that's all I have to say for this one. If you have uh, something you want me to watch, go ahead and suggest it. I pretty much will listen to any suggestions as long as you're not suggesting something gross or something. Or if you happen to me to toast something specifically, go right ahead, because I'm gonna try to go as long as I can without repeating anything. I think I did a bagel recently, but not a cinnamon raisin bagel. But, I mean, eventually I know I'm gonna have to repeat something. These are really hot. Anyway, this is King Cool, and please drive home safe. After the toast, and after the crunch, there's the crust. So, the funny thing about Bender's Big Score is it came out, I think, in 2008, right before the whole economic crisis thing. And I, I, you know, for a few years I stopped even saying the word economic because it just drove me, I was just like, oh God, it's like a word that just people are like, oh, economic crisis. I'm like, shut up, I'm tired of hearing about it. But this whole movie is about the planet going bankrupt because of scammers. Um, now I don't think any of that stuff had actually happened at that point, but it certainly has a slightly different resonance. It certainly isn't as fun, but I don't know if this was ever a topic that could have been fun, you know? Hey, well, we're all going bankrupt! Everyone's fired, and we're all going to live on table scraps and garbage! Well, same as every day! Whatever.